Welcome, welcome everyone to a brand new episode of Not Quite Strangers. My name is Valerie Hope. I am a professional speaker. I'm a leadership coach, but I also host this wonderful podcast where I bring together two people who do not know one another to have a meaningful conversation about pretty much anything or everything. This particular episode is actually quite special. It's like a family reunion of sorts. <laughs> But imagine family reunions of people who don't actually know much about being family <laughs> to each other. <laughs> so I have here Alicia Williams. Alicia, you and I are second cousins, actually, because your mother is my cousin. She yes, is, cousin. Okay. yes, your grandmother was my aunt. And she's mm -hmm. passed, rest in peace. And um, I haven't seen your mom, Alicia, in like, 20 years maybe oh my gosh <laughs> is, yeah she's made herself very very scarce in, yeah, yeah. in a long yeah. time I have seen you more than I've seen her let's just say okay that, so. that sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> and Alicia I invited you to this podcast because over the last year or so year and a half now I guess we've had some reunions virtual reunions with our side of the family the hope side of the family like my father's mm -hmm. side and we go on zoom uh, at least once a month, it seems like, and have these really cool conversations where we get an opportunity to get to know one another better. And I remember when you sent your video, because I think that your generation has yeah. started doing some more like TikTok, like they're you know, shorter videos, sharing some yeah. things about yourself. And yours was so captivating. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like entrepreneurial and she's an educator and she's doing all these kind of cool things. And I was like, I need to have Alicia on my podcast because she has some interesting stuff to say. I'm like, hmm, who should I connect her to, though? And ta-da, enter my nephew, Kai. Kai Maddox here. Kai is my younger brother, Orlando's son. And Kai, I picked you because whenever you and I've talked, you also, you have, you have like a hustle mentality, <laughs> like a, an entrepreneurial hustle mentality. I, as I've seen you, evolve from your graduating from high school to now your first years in college and discover what you're into and what you're interested in. I was like, oh my goodness, I think he and Alicia have a few threads in common. This might be a really cool conversation. And you'll have an opportunity to meet, I guess, a third cousin. I guess you guys are like third cousins. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. So this is nice. This is like a whole generational and familial, I don't know, connection. So thank you both so much for saying yes to being on the podcast. Welcome to Not Quite Strangers. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> so, so I got to ask, I always ask my guests, what made you say, say yes to being on a podcast to talk to a complete stranger? Well, for one, I have been saying for the past several months now that I know that there are cousins that are in my age group that I just don't know about, that I would to meet them either in person or if we start off on the Zoom calls like we've been doing with everyone else. Just to say like, you know, I do have cousins my age that I do know that I am going to be cool with or that I am already cool with or we'll build that relationship when it gets to that point. But so when you said like, oh, we're going to do one with you and one of your cousins you've never met, I'm like, oh, that's great. That's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> so I jumped at the opportunity. And speaking of age group, of age range, Alicia, can you tell us how old you are? I'm 24. 24 years old. Fantastic. All right, Alicia and Kai, why did you say yes? Um, well, I really don't know. Like <laughs> a lot of my like dad's family, like the side of his family a lot. So I guess this was something new and I've never been on a podcast before. So this was so also something new for me. And um, I think it can help me out just because of the fact that if I can relate to somebody in a way, I feel like, I don't know, it, I don't know, like just relating to somebody, I don't know, it's, it's, it makes you happy sometimes just because it's something that you can find in common with other people. Mm. So, yeah. That's cool. Well, welcome. You're welcome to the other side, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of the family so you guys don't know you should tell each other where you live or where you are currently in the in the country Go ahead, Kai. <laughs> well i'm in alabama right now um i well I, I guess you could say i basically temporarily live in troy alabama um 
but I did used to live with my dad in Ozark, Alabama, uh, my senior year in high school. Um, and then I, you know, of course, when I went to college, I ended up moving to Troy. So that's why I'm teaching that now. Kai, how old are you? I'm 19. 19. All right. It'll turn 20, though, like in next month. So <laughs> <laughs> you're basically 20. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I live in New York. I've always lived in New York. Um, currently in Brooklyn, which also I've always lived. So I'm just in Brooklyn, New York. That's where I'm from. <laughs> now, have Alicia, have you been to Alabama? And Kai, have you been to New York? I think I've only driven through Alabama when I went on a road trip in 2020. So like the outskirts of it. Like I've driven through maybe 15 minutes of Alabama. <laughs> it's that much. Where were you going? But not actually being there. Um, I did a road trip with my mom's side of the family. We did, my well, other family. Um, we did a road trip from New York to Louisiana. Ah, got it. Okay. So 15 minutes of Alabama is all you got. So pretty much. <laughs> like right, on, right on the edge line of the state. Just okay. Right okay. there. <laughs> Kai, have you been to New York? Um, I want to say I have when I was like really, really young, but I could possibly be wrong about that. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't remember anything about that. So it's like, I'll say no, because I just, I, had a, I don't remember anything. But I possibly have been there, but I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe by the end of this podcast, you will, I, both of you will have plans to actually see each other or meet something, some, you know, live in one of those two states <laughs> or perhaps both. Right. Um, so I think it's important because you guys are, you know, we're, we're in the same family, but you don't know each other very well. So let's talk a little bit about that. So what do you know about the side of the, this side of the family, right? So this is the hope side of the family, if you will. And um, in, in, in your case, Kai is the, your father's side. In your case, Alicia is your mother's side. So let's just start with that. What do you know about the family so far? Or what are some things that you've been hearing or, or learning about it in the, in the last few, I don't know, days, weeks, months, years? <laughs> What do I know about this family? <laughs> and it's not a quiz, by the way. I've learned, I'm just learning some things myself, so. <laughs> yeah, so what do I know? I know that it started with great grandma, then there was nine, and then there were at least 50 cousins. And then of those 50 cousins, maybe half of them have children. And, you know, I just learned what part of uh, Panama our family's from. Uh, Rio, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to butcher the name. I Rio, Abajo. People, Rio Abajo. Rio Abajo. Rio Abajo. There we go. Yeah, I just learned that. And I don't really know what else I can say I know. But yeah, I know some stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. Kai, what about for you? Um, we'll see. I'm in the position of trying to learn. Um, I do know that this side of the family, they're um, Hispanic. Um, and I think that's majority it. I mean, I know that everybody is very successful um, and they're doing their own thing. So, but I'm still learning. Um, I can say that I'm, I haven't really, I can say that I have reached out, but I haven't, I haven't probably reached out that I'm enough that I'm supposed to be reaching out to um, actually try to learn and try to learn the information about, you know, more information about the family. So, but I'm learning still, so I can't really put a lot of information out there, as you can see, but <laughs> I'm <sorry. laughs> Good. Well, this, I think, is a perfect time for you to, for um, either of you to ask a question. So what question do you have for one another? Oh, my gosh. What question do I have? Okay. I have a list of questions. Um, okay, so you are, start with the basics. You are whose son again? Um, Rolando's Hope. Uh, Rolando's son. Okay. I think I've met your dad maybe once in my life <laughs> when I was really young. <laughs> I th yeah, I think I've met him maybe once. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't even know if I have. Yeah. Okay, so you're Rolando's son, which is Uncle... I'm trying. I'm trying to do like the whole family tree thing because yeah, yeah. I'm trying to categorize categorize everybody. Okay, you're this person's son, this person's grandson. That's Uncle Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. Uncle Eddie. Okay. Cool. All right. And That's so, what be if you guys end up hearing her. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I honestly didn't know that you were my cousin. So, um, you know, like, who is your parents or who is your mom? Okay, so I am Tanya's daughter. I'm Tanya's second daughter. I have an older sister. I'm Tanya's second daughter. And Tanya is the daughter of Rosa, who is Uncle Eddie's younger sister. Because she was born after him. Yes, Uncle Eddie's younger sister. Wow. Um, well, well, she did pass away. But... Rosa's granddaughter and so Eddie's granny. Yeah, I'm Tanya's daughter. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> oh, this is so perfect. So, so you know, all right, we call Uncle, who you call Uncle Eddie, Alicia, Kai is Abuelo. Abuelo, our grand, okay. our, his grandfather, my father, right? Um, okay. And so he's one of nine kids. He was, he's, he had eight siblings. And so, so this side of the, of the family is actually quite big. There's a, there's a lot of people, people yeah. that I haven't even met in person either. At least I don't think we've ever met in person. Not in person. No. So if, I don't know how you met my brother, but it might have happened. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think I may have met him yeah. once. I've heard, I know I've heard him. I've heard of him multiple times and I think maybe once, but then again, there's a lot of people in our family who have similar names or the same name. So I probably <laughs> am talking about somebody else. I don't know. So I'm curious for the two of you, what is that like to have an extended family like this that either you are slowly learning more about or that you don't know much about? Like what, what's that been like for you guys? I know for me, so I'll just share from my perspective, I, you know, we were the part of the family that's my, my father stayed in Panama when most of his siblings immigrated to the States. And so we didn't grow, you know, we weren't born in the US. We didn't grow up in New York. We were in the military when we moved here. So we moved around quite a bit. And so we were always either physically distant and sometimes even actually probably emotionally distant too, because we just were not aware of what was going on and, and who was who. And the few times that we did get together was such a short period of time here for a week or two you go to visit New York or something. So we didn't really have the emotional connection with everybody until now as adults. And actually during the pandemic, having these family reunions on a regular basis, and actually I call it our family podcast, <laughs> where we get a chance to meet people from the family and ask questions. That's what's given me like more and more connection. So even more curious. That's why I was just like, hey, Alicia, come, let's, let's come hang out. I'm much more comfortable doing that. Whereas before it was really just like, you know, my brothers, their kids, my parents. Mm -hmm. That's it. That was family for me. So my definition of family has really expanded in the last few years. So I'm curious about what about the two of you and how do you see family now and how, you know, how it feels. So for me, it's, it's a mixture of very confusing because it's like I have to keep remembering, okay, who's who, how are we family again? And then it's also exciting because like I said, you know, I've always, I know that, I, I know that there's a lot of hope. I just know there's a lot of hope. I know that we're spread out all over the country or all over the world at this point. And so it's exciting when I get to meet another one and it's like, oh, you, you're close. First of all, you're closer in my age. So yes, we can bond. We can <laughs> add you to our family. Like we have our own chat, the third generation, we have our own chat. We try to have our own days and everything. So it's exciting. And it's like a learning lesson because it's like, okay, we're family. We're strangers, but we're family. And we can move from being strangers and just keep the whole, we're family. We can get close from all that. So it's been an adventure. It's been an adventure, but I, I'm enjoying every part of it because I just like meeting cousins, I guess, you know, where you could put it. Yeah. So Kai, you're in, I think she was extending an invitation to the, the third generation. We call, I call them the three G's. So we have oh, yeah. the OGs, which is like Abuelo, his generation. Yeah. I'm with, we're the two G's, right? The, the children. The and then the three G's are the, yeah. my nieces and nephews. So. We are going to have you added to our conversation, our chat. <laughs> Uh-oh. Are you okay there, Kai? Yeah, she's just dropping the umbrellas. Uh, that's oh. kind of windy out here. Oh, got it. Yeah, so what about for you, Kai? What about family? What is it? How's it been 
not knowing as many or your curiosity about it? Like how, how's that been for you? I mean, um, I have been curious about it because like you said, um, I feel like the only type of family that I knew were like, um, you know, Tio Dito, Uncle Ricky, um, what's it called? Abuelo, Abuela, my dad, their kids. Um, so I really didn't know a lot of people in the family. I think that was like, you know, of course I know that Abuelo has a lot of sisters and I know that they live actually on the East Coast, um, most of them. And, you know, I, I think I've been up there to meet a couple of them, but I was just like, um, you know, I didn't really like, I guess you could say it was only like a one-time thing. So I didn't really get to know and like actually get to know them. And then it was, and it was with when I was young, my bad. And it was when I was young. So I really don't remember a lot, but um, I think like, you know, I am very curious about, you know, who else, like, you know, cause that's just all I know. And I know there's more, so. There's a lot of us. <laughs> so this is, this is a great place. There's a lot, yeah. And they are all in the East Coast, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all over here. <laughs> um, I, I wanna shift a little bit from talking about family to talking about what drives you guys. Because like I said, one of the things that I thought really seemed to connect for me when I heard both of you share is your entrepreneurship, you know, your, your tendency to want to, to build things and create. So I'm curious about what are you excited to create? Like what you get interested in? Tell us about that. Any aspect of it. Kai, you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, well, I think like, I think like one thing that probably like started this entrepreneurship is, um, well, I know like when I was a little, when I was in high school, um, I was selling shoes. Like I used to sell like J's, like, I think my mom, she kind of like invested into me, you know, of course I didn't have the money at the time, but she invested into it because of the fact that it was something new. So, I mean, at one point I was kind of selling shoes. It didn't really last long, probably like a month or so. But after that, I mean, it kind of built on top of that. Um, also, you know, I invested in stocks. Um, I actually wanted to do that since I was in middle school. So when I, when I actually wow. turned 15, I, I bought my first stock of Ford, um, you know, like the driving company Ford. Mm -hmm. I invested into that and um, I kind of started to build my portfolio around that. Um, so, you know, I invested into Apple, I invested into Nike, you know, all those big type of stores that you know of already, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just to build, just to create wealth, just generational wealth on top of that. Cause you know, that's money that I think can last forever, even though you're dead or anything like that. So mm. I think that was something that I guess you could say that's kind of entrepreneurship, but I don't really know. Just, yeah. But where did that come from? Like, where'd you get that from? From you? <laughs> like, I wasn't like that. Well, I don't think of what well. made you want to, what made you want to invest in stocks? Cause I only started investing in stocks. I think one when COVID started, but if you want to say if you've been investing in stocks since in middle school, like, is it that you watched something and it was like, oh, that looks cool. I want to do it. Or is it like, you just knew you wanted to invest in stocks. No, I got inspired. Okay. Cause you can't really invest into stocks until you're 18. So I got inspired mm -hmm. to invest into stocks when I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, I was in this, this club in middle school. My mom signed me up and it was called distinguished gentleman. And basically it's about, a, you know, some African-American men basically, you know, telling, you know, young kids like us how to dress um, the attire that we're supposed to dress in um, casual, you know, business type casual, you know, business type of attire. So, um, you know, they were talking about stocks and stuff like that. And I you know I always remembered it. And, um, it was it was interesting to me because it was just like, well, first it was about money. So I was just like, you know, that's already kind of mm -hmm. drew towards it anyway. But, you know, when they was talking about how like, it's basically wealth because then that's like as life started going on I started to actually understand what rich and wealthy is because you know the you know the distinction between the two of those is that you know wealthy people they their money can go forever you know you can pass that on to their children and their children can pass it on to their children so it's something that can go on forever and I think that was something that I always wanted because I feel like as African-American that's something that we kind of struggle at because it's something that we don't know you know mm -hmm. You know, that's why I feel like, you know, I can change that in a way. Um, you know, it's just something that I can pass down. You know, I don't have anything that's passed down to me. I don't really have anything passed down to me. But, you know, I can start passing things down just starting with me. Very true. So, um, yeah, that's really what got me into that, I guess you can say. Very respectable. <laughs> Very respectable. Um, for me, 
I'm sorry, what was the question again? Because that was just like, wow. <laughs> like, that's very well, impressive. feel free to answer that question. The original question was like, what are you creating and what is it that, that's interesting to you when it comes to entrepreneurship? Or you can follow up on anything that Kai said. Okay. So when it comes to entrepreneurship, my main goal is, and it sounds cliche, but my main goal is to create a difference. So my field of entrepreneurship, like you asked me earlier, I'm a cosmetology student. I do hair. I'm learning the art of hair and how to expand my knowledge on what I already know. Um, what got me into that, funny enough, would be my grandmother. When we were younger, I used to watch her either her, relax her own hair, relax my mother's hair. And then my aunt, she went to cosmetology school. She was a cosmetology student. I was one of her I call it one of her living mannequins because whenever <laughs> she needed to try out a new wash and set technique or a new twisting technique, they would do my hair. But also when I was younger, going to the salons and seeing like, you know, I walk into a salon with my mom, and my sister, my grandmother, they're getting their hair done. It's like, oh, you know, just $25 because they have relaxed hair. My hair has never been relaxed. So instantly it's at least $60 enough just to get my hair done. So I didn't always get my hair done that often at salon. And just seeing that, you know, I wanted my hair to look like theirs. So one day I went home and just started trying to do my own hair. I think by the time I was in seventh grade, I already knew how to wash my own hair, flat iron my own hair. Um, I had my grandmother teach me how to braid until I was actually able to learn how to braid my own hair myself. And then from there, it was just, YouTube University, just going on YouTube, like, okay, how do I do this? And then trying it out of my hair, just a lot of trials and error. And then it's like, one day you just, I just wake up and it's like, okay, I'm gonna try to get it to actually work. And then from there, it's like, okay, now I know there are other people, especially other younger kids, especially now in the time that we're in where everybody is embracing their natural hair, but not knowing how to take care of it. I'm like, okay, well, based off what I learned, what I'm learning, I can teach them mm. what I'm learning and they can know how to do their hair as well. And what helped with that even more is working with, I was working at a summer camp and I had this one student who she would come to camp looking one way by the end of the day, she'd leave looking a whole nother way because her hair just would, it would just do its own thing. And so after a while I would sit there in camp, I'd ask her mother like, Hey, can I braid her hair? And her mother's like, please. <laughs> and so I would use my students as mannequins. I'd start doing their hair in class. And I'm like, you know, I can really do something with this. And so I started going and finding classes, virtual classes, in-person classes on how to do other things to expand what I now call my brand, which is the Hair Me Out Law. Wait, say that again. My brand is called the Hair Me Out Law. Hair Me Out Loft. You hear me out loud. Yes, I so it, it's okay. a, I like clever wordplay. So it's like yeah. whenever I'm telling somebody something, I'm like, okay, but hear me out real quick. So I was like, oh, <laughs> hear me out. So yeah. Ah, nice. Hear me out. So, so for you, cosmetology was really the entry point, the entry point for for expressing your entrepreneurial spirit. Spirit. Yes. But you do all. You're not just on a, a cosmetologist. You're not. You don't just do hair. You have other businesses it seems is, am I making this up I don't have other businesses um I was just answering the question about the entrepreneurial side right the creativity so, okay entrepreneurial it's cosmetology but okay. on a regular I'm also I aspire to be a teacher I don't know how I'm going to manage both but I'm going to make it work somehow <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah interesting all right Kyle you have a question um let me see uh, I I don't I don't but I'm gonna <laughs> think of something though I, I really don't right now but I'm gonna think of something <laughs> so I'm gonna so you mentioned a guy that you sold J's right those are tennis yeah. shoes yeah, Jordans okay yeah. Jordans and Alicia you should tell Kai about oh. your collection <laughs> If I could walk and show you right now, I would. I have my own sneaker collection. I'm actually a sneakerhead. Um, given the opportunity between wearing sneakers and wearing regular shoes, I will always choose sneakers. I just recently gave away a couple pairs, which brought me down to, I think I have 60 something pairs of sneakers still. 
So yes, I have literally a section of my wall. Yes, I have a section of my wall that is almost reaching the ceiling. It's about three or four stacks of just sneaker boxes. I have, it's not about 60 pairs of sneakers. And like more six companies. zero. Like six zero, yeah. Like 59, 60, yeah. A lot of sneakers. Because? Um... I don't really know when my sneaker, my love for sneakers really start. Well, actually I do. Um, funny enough, I found this picture of me when I was, I think maybe six or seven in a church dress and sneakers next to my sister who's wearing a church dress and church shoes. And I'm like, okay, obviously I was told to put on shoes and I chose sneakers instead. So I guess it, start, it stems from there, but around middle school, is when I first started seeing things like um, Jordan clocks. So literally people have Jordans one through 12 on their wall in the shape of a clock with a clock piece in the middle. So it literally tells the time based off of your sneaker. Right. So that was my first interest in Jordans. Every time Jordans came out, I was like, I have to get them. It was There was a point in time where I would literally get at least one pair of sneakers per month like consecutively. And this is before I had to start buying my own. Of course, when I had to start buying my own, I had to lighten up a little bit. And that didn't last long. So I meant that my first job would be at Foot Locker or Nike or something of that sort. And my first job was at Foot Locker. So it started my sneakerhead life again. Took it on a break because I was in college. But then I also worked at Nike, which just my room looks like a Nike shoe box right now. There's Nike everywhere in my room. So yeah. <laughs> that that's that's pretty much my sneakerhead story. <laughs> I haven't really given up on my Jordan clock idea, but I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna put them on the wall anymore. <laughs> but yeah. I, I saw your facial expression as she was sharing <laughs> some of her examples. So I'm curious what was going through your mind as you were listening to Lisa talk about her <laughs> sneakerhead obsession. I don't, I don't even think the time that I've been on this earth, I've had over 60 pairs of shoes. So uh, <laughs> that's really what's crazy to me. But just the fact that you can collect those many shoes, though. Uh, I mean, yeah. I <laughs> what helps with my sneaker collection is the fact that um, every year up until COVID started, I was able to lower the amount that I had because my church would normally go on a missions trip to Jamaica. And I started a shoe drive because every time we went there, it's like you really get to see how third world countries operate. And so you go there and you see all these kids, they're running around at this orphanage and they're having so much fun barefoot. And it's like, wow. So my, I think my fourth or fifth year going, I was there in some Adidas slides and I'm running around with the kids and they're beating me in races and we're playing sports and everything like that. And this one kid, whenever I go, there's always this one kid that just like stays attached to my hip. And he just kept looking at my feet. And so I had on, I had on some very comfortable socks that day. And I was like, you know what? And I just took my slippers off right there. And I just like put them on his feet. And they were too big for him. But seeing the smile on his face was just like, he had, it's, it's almost like this was his first pair of name brand shoes, but also just, it was just slippers. So I'm like, if slippers can do that for you, then I wonder what sneakers can do. So from that year on, every year I would do a shoe drive. I would get the shoes. I'd have people give gently worn shoes, everything like that, which gives them an excuse to clean out their closet and also gives me an excuse to give away sneakers to make space for more, but also to give them what we think of as, yeah, I only wore it once. I don't want to wear it again. I don't want it anymore. So normally people will throw it away. I'm like, instead of throwing it away, let's give it to someone who would actually care for it. Mm. So that was how my, I would, you know, lower the amount of sneakers I have, but also it's not like I'm just throwing them away. I had a reason for why I was giving them away. So. That was the, the, the great sneak and purge of 2017. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kai, what, so what, in, what are you into now? Are you doing anything else with sneakers these days or no? Are you? Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, if I get to some pair of sneakers, I get them, but I'm buying my own shoes now, you know, so I, can't, I, I, I really don't, I don't really like, 
I mean, my mom sometimes she would be like, okay, you need to, you know, update your wardrobe or something like that. But I'd just be like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's not that I'm not into clothes or any of that, but it's just like, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like, I'm not really into that right now at this moment. So I'm kind of just trying to get what I can get. Like, you know, I, I'm not really into that type of stuff right now. Um, and, but through high school, oh yeah, for sure. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get all the new Jordans. I'm trying to get all the new latest clothes that just dropped, like all mm-hmm. of them. But especially just living in Georgia, um, because I did live there for a little while. I mean, that was, you most definitely had to kind of update your wardrobe in a way. I feel like, because it's just like, just to fit in, I guess you could say in a way. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the type of mindset I had. Really, you didn't really fit in. You basically were just following somebody. But I mean, just to fit in in that city, I mean, of course, I was kind of up to date. I'm trying to get my stuff up to date, but not anymore. I'm not really looking for no shoes or got the same <laughs> shoes that I had from high school. It's, it's nothing. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. This is fascinating because um, I mean, both of you have just described how you've evolved, right? For something that was quite fulfilling, but more self-serving to now mm-hmm. thinking about, okay, you know, Kai, you mentioned you're wanting to build gener- generational wealth. So you're much more conservative, it sounds like, when it comes to, expen- to expenses. Um, Alicia, you're noticing that, hey, you know, I can acquire a lot of stuff, but actually there's other people in other parts of the world who could actually benefit, which, mm-hmm. you know, for, for whom this brings an immense amount of, of joy and you can contribute to that joy. So it's really kind of interesting to hear how the two of you have, you've grown up. Oh my gosh, you're like so mature now. <laughs> um, so I wanna, I wanna just shift gears a bit, talking about, so your career paths, right? So you have this int- entrepreneurial kind of mindset, you're thinking about how, you know, how to create things and, and you're focused on the brand, for example. What does this mean as far as what you wanna dedicate your life to? Your, what kind of vocation are you attracted to? as a result of some of the things you've learned and, and the goals that you've set? I'll go first, all right. So, um, well, right now, when I, well, when I went, I really didn't have this as my career at first, um, but I guess I'll start off to when I was in high school. Um, high school, I wanted to become an engineer. Um, I actually want to become a civil engineer, which is basically the people who do the blueprint of each building that they want to set in a location. And so I found that very fascinating because, um, you know, in high school, um, we were in this thing called the STEM program. Well, I was in this thing called the STEM program. And basically, every student basically had to pick out what type of career they wanted to have or what type of pathway they wanted to have, including like, you know, the WE program, which is basically like wellness and health. Um, You know, you had the STEM, which is basically like science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, I think it was like AME, which is uh, audio it has something to do with audio, audio, visual, and like, um, you know, entertainment. Media entertainment, uh, something like that. I think, yeah. I think I heard of that. Right. So um, I, I was in the STEM program and basically like what we did in there was like, you know, we welded. Um, we ended up like getting on the computer, actually doing like a whole blueprint of a house, basically like building it from scratch, like the measurements of each wall, the type of material on the inside and the outside of the house, um, the roofing even the interior designs and the exterior designs. So I found that very interesting to me. Um, and then when I got into, when I moved down to Alabama, they didn't hold that type of class or they didn't hold that type of, you know, program. So um, eventually I had to, you know, try to kind of switch it up. And I already knew basically like I wanted to go to college, but I didn't know whatever college I went to, was it gonna, you know, actually, was that gonna be in their college? So. Mm-hmm. I kind of switched it up when I went to Troy um, because I go to Troy University. So I switched it up when I went to Troy and I ended up getting into, you know, I didn't want to go into college with an undecided under my name. So I wanted to know, like, have a sense of me having something going on. Um, So I went in there and I had the, I think I started off with global, yeah, it was called global business. And um, basically that was just like the intro of business. I was just a freshman, you know, I'm a sophomore now. So it wasn't, you know, that was just last year. So it started out just with the intro of business, you know, just basically learning about the different type of business that you can get into, including accounting, um, you know, well, shoot, entrepreneurship, um, anything, uh, you know, because, you know, with the business degree and just business itself, it can expand to different different jobs everywhere, honestly. So um, I started off with that, and then I actually changed it my first semester of my sophomore year to marketing. Uh, I wanted to do sports marketing, 
which is basically like the advertisements of like that you see on Nike or like you see mm-hmm. on their armor, um, anything that has to do with like sports related. So I kind of changed it to that. And then I actually ended up changing it again, <laughs> like that same semester to, um, <laughs> to sports, uh, to exercise science, a pre-health professional. And that's basically what I'm going to do with that is I want to become a physical therapist. And I thought that was kind of easy for me because throughout the time that I've been, you know, living, I've actually been playing sports. Um, you know, I started out playing soccer when I was like four years old and I ended up stopped playing when I was like in seventh grade. And then, um, you know, I got into football and football was like a big thing for me. Um, I ended up actually going or well, doing walk on at Troy for football for like the spring semester of my last last year, my spring semester, all the way into like the summer. And then they cut me off the team because there's too many people on the roster. But I don't really look at that as like anything bad because it's like I always told myself that I wanted to go D1. You know, that's Division One. So I told myself I want to go Division One. I did. And, you know, I didn't end playing football in high school. So I can always say that. And I feel like it's a lot harder just to do walk on than it is to, you know, like get a scholarship, especially if you have a big name already, you know, oh, yeah. schools can come anyway. But, you know, so, um, yeah, I changed it to, you know, to exercise science and um, I want to become a physical therapist. And the reason why I changed it is because uh, I felt like later on I was going to regret um, actually getting in the, the business, you know, the business, getting a business degree just because it was like, I had to think, I was like, why well, go to school for a business degree when you know, like you can start a business without a degree, like, yeah, honestly. And um, so I didn't really like, you know, I started to think about that and I was like, well, I, I want to go to college for actually like a reason, you know, not, not saying that it's not no reason. That's not a reason because if it wasn't a reason then it wouldn't be a degree, but no, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying it like, I just want something. I don't know. I just felt like I, I needed something more. I just wanted something. I wanted a specialty. More. Right, something more for myself. And, um, you know, I don't really see that there's a lot of doctors in our family. So I guess I could just say I want to go into that for that reason. Also, because um, the change of like locations, I felt like if I was to get into the business degree and got my business degree, um, I would, of course, I would have got out of college a little bit early. I would have got out last actually next year of 2023. But on top of that, I wanted to know, like, if I was to get a business degree, I felt like depending on what type of job that I picked, um, I would have had to go there instead of actually having the freedom mm-hmm. of going anywhere that I wanted in the country. So with having, a, you know, with the degree that I want now, um, I felt like there's physical therapy spots everywhere in the country. So it wouldn't be that hard to, you know, actually find a job and I will have the freedom to go anywhere because I love to travel. Um, mm. I like seeing places. So, yeah. Yeah, that's I'm excited for you, Kai. I do. I And I totally feel that nothing against business degrees. And there's a lot of people who are very successful because they've been able to learn. But I think what I see in your philosophy is you already have kind of an entrepreneurial spirit anyway. You probably could have learned that on your own faster. And this is an opportunity to get an education in something that you wouldn't necessarily have as accessible to you, right? That requires a little bit more specialty. So that's, that's what I heard and what you shared. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I guess like, I, I apologize, but later on, I guess like, what I'm start doing with that is basically like bringing that entrepreneur out because um, like later on when I get the experience and everything with the physical therapy, I guess I'll want to like create my own type of clinic, I guess you could say, and just mm-hmm. have my own um, once I have the experience, of course, but that'll be years on from now. That'll be like a retirement type of thing, I guess you could say. Uh, oh, no. What? <laughs> so, You're like, like 19 uh, till my retirement? <laughs> Please. No, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to honor that with a response. Retirement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fascinating. Alicia, what about you? Tell me, talk to us a little bit about your vocational ex- <laughs> vision. Ironically, I actually started out as a business major as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting to what I'm currently going to be going to school for after I finished cosmetology school was very similar to how Kai did it, except he did it while he's in school still, whereas I started college straight out of high school, but I had a high, my high school mentality was, I know how to finesse my way into getting a good grade. I went into college thinking that I can think that way as well, and it was not the same. Um, I started out as a business major, but actually I think after my first semester of college is when I already started thinking like, okay, 
I get this degree and then what am I going to go do? Because I don't want to go sit in anybody's office. I don't want to sit in a cubicle. I don't really want to be in a building that's full of people where it's like I have to go all the way up to the 50th floor and get on and off the stops with all these other. I just didn't want to do anything like that. <laughs> I switched it to entrepreneurship, but then the classes that I was taking were still the same classes as if I was a business major. And then I got very disengaged with school I just wasn't still in school at all so I took a break to see what is it that I actually want to do that way I can figure out what major to follow which is also another ironic thing he went into civil engineering and I actually thought about majoring in architecture Mm. Uh, mainly interior designing as well as a civil engineering because I like the idea of not inter- um, not civil engineering, structural engineering, because I like the idea of actually like making the buildings and picking the shapes of the buildings and everything of that sort. I live in New York City, so we have buildings that are in almost any shape you can think of, whether it's a rounded shape or some type of hexagonal shape. Like we just have weirdly shaped buildings, but it's so like thinking of the science behind how is this building standing and it doesn't really have a base is just mm. amazing to me. So I thought about architectural engin- um, architectural science and all that engineering stuff. But then I was like, is this actually something I want to do? So I went from that to I'm thinking about it again. I was like, I can just be a math major because I love math. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because everybody who I've said this to so far, like I'm going to major in math and they're like, are you sure you want to do that? And I'm like, you know what? Never mind. No, I'm not. <laughs> and funny enough, Kai, um, our family does not have many doctors. No. However, you will learn that we have a lot of teachers in our family. Like our family is prone to be teachers. Like a lot of people are teaching. And I was like, no, I'm going to go against that. I don't want to be a teacher like everybody else. I want to be something else. I want to do a different field. It was like, all right, medical. Absolutely not. I'm not going to medical medical school. That's not for me. So I've been running from the path of, oh, you don't need to be a teacher. But at the end of the day, no matter what job I worked, I somehow always ended up teaching kids something. And so eventually I was like, you know what? Fine. But if I'm going to be a teacher, I'm not going to be an elementary school teacher. No. Everybody's like, oh, you're so great with children. And I'm like, that's great. I don't want to teach them. (laughs) I am finally on the path of becoming a high school math teacher, which combines everything I love, which is teaching, making a difference, and math. I don't know why I love math, but it's just always come very easy to me, even as they keep changing how math works nowadays, but it always comes easy to me. And then also being able to teach someone else what I know and leaving an impact, like all of my, I have to look back on it and all of my favorite teachers were always my math teachers. Mm. I can go to their class. They can see that, you know, I learned math slightly faster than other students. I had this one teacher in high school where I passed my, I did my geometry region, I believe in the January of the school year. And because I passed it, I would sit in her class with my class, but she would have me in the back learning how to do trigonometry. Mm. And it was to the point she had to teach the class still, so I had to get, basically read the teacher's book and teach myself trigonometry until she can come back and teach me everything, make sure I'm doing everything right. So that left an impact on me. So having those teachers that leave an impact, it's a good feeling to have those teachers to always talk about, but then it's an even better feeling to be that teacher that they talk about. So I aspire to be one of those teachers where you come to my class and you don't even feel like you know you're in school because you're having fun you don't feel like you're learning math because it's become very interactive it's become very hands-on everybody can participate if you get an answer wrong you know we're not going to be we're not going to belittle you we're going to help you get to the right answer help you get to the right point get everybody ready for their tests and things like that so my current field of uh career choice is high school math teacher and I don't think I'm going to change that anytime soon because I think I've exhausted my other options. I've tried every other option and I'm just like, this does nothing for me. I don't see what I can do with this. Like I know what I can do with it, but I don't see me being happy doing it. Mm. So I have to go with what I know. 
even if it gives me headaches, it's something that makes me happy. I've worked with kids since 2016. And then now it's just, I left working with kids. I started working with Nike and somehow ended up working with kids again. I left that. I started doing hair and somehow half of my clientele are kids. And so it's like every time I try to escape being around kids, they just come back in any way, shape or form. So eventually you got to stop running from these things and just, <laughs> just, you know, accept it. It's like the quicker you accept it, the more you realize you actually have fun doing it. But yeah, it's very similar to how Kai did it, but it's just like, I did it the long way, which was, <laughs> I said, I'm not going back to school. I'm not spending another dollar on education until I know what exactly I'm going for. Right. Yeah. And that's what brought me to this point that I'm at now. I'm going to start college when I finish uh, cosmetology school at the end of this year. Wow. What a journey. <laughs> yeah. What a journey. So it is fascinating. And, you know, you all will continue to evolve in your vocational journey. I think, you know, I studied public relations and Spanish. And before even getting into that, before declaring that, <laughs> I kind of like what you said, I didn't want to go into college undecided. You know, I want you, have, you wanted to claim yeah. a, a, a path. So I claimed initially international relations because I'm like, I love travel. I love people. <laughs> boom but then it was like oh this is political science and eh, i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> so after my first semester or freshman year i was like nope let's do something else public relations there's people <laughs> there and so it was more in the, in the arms of communication and marketing so i did that and then because i'm a native spanish speaker i also took uh, a lot of advanced spanish classes in college and so i ended up getting a double major and those two things Although the courses or the careers that are associated with people with those degrees didn't appeal to me, I didn't want to be a marketer or an event planner or anything like that. Those two skill sets, what I learned in school because of those of that path, helped me a become a much more effective public speaker, which I am a professional speaker now. Also, I designed my own website. I designed flyers, my PowerPoint, like because of what I learned in my PR class. And then also in, in Spanish, I was able to do a lot of interpreting and translating. I work with clients from different you know, Latin American countries and you know, being able to coach them in, in a professional level in Spanish was huge for me. And so all, to, all that to say, whatever you're learning in school will open many more doors than what the doors that are coming out of directly connected to that particular study, field of study. So just know that there's a lot of skills and there's really, there's two cool assessments that I always recommend to people. And now I'll, I'll tell the two of you, but then whoever's listening might take this on. One is, is called the wealth dynamics assessment. And, and this is really about what are the personality traits that you possess that makes uh, abundance possible, like your ability to generate money will be best done through your personality. But there's like seven or nine, I think, different ways to do that based on these personality assessments. That's number one, wealth dynamics. And I'll put the, the link in the chat in, case, in, in, the, in the show notes. And then the other assessment I like is also it's called Standout, the Standout Assessment by Marcus Buckingham. And that one focuses on identifying what are your innate strengths. And not strengths because you've been doing it a long time and you know how to do it, but strengths because when you do it, you feel strong. It's something that you can do with your eyes closed because it's so natural to you. And that one actually gives you some language on how to describe, here's my top strength, this is how it looks. So that as you're moving through your career path, you can see, okay, this is another way for me to exercise my strength. So Kai, you may not have to wait until you retire. That's the bad news. You may have to, you may do it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> so as we're wrapping up our time together, I just, I'd love to ask you guys, what, what did you learn or what are you getting out of our conversation today? What are you walking away with? So far, I learned that me and Kai are actually very much alike. <laughs> like, we pretty much have like the same stories, but just told from different authors. Like, we're, mm -hmm. like everything that he said, I'm like, okay, well, I actually did that, or I actually tried that, or I actually thought about that, but I didn't think of it in that way. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's again, strange, but exciting to me, like, my cousins. <laughs> Cool. 
Kai? Um, just like I said, just meeting a new family member. Um, anything like that is very exciting because like I said, I could probably not know you and just maybe I went up to New York and or I could go to New York and just pass by you and never knew you were part of my family at all. So I mean just seeing another family member that's that's very exciting for me. Um and then what I'm walking away with is just knowing someone. Um knowing that like I said some finding something similar between somebody. Um I think that that's interests a lot of people. Love that. So if, so for anyone who listened to this episode, if you, if the two of you had to extend a challenge to them or extend to them uh, an opportunity to experience a bit of what you just experienced in this conversation, what would you, what, what would you invite them to do? What would you ask them to try? I will take them to you. Good answer. Uh, <laughs> or <laughs> but, I don't know, that's actually a great option. Like <laughs> if you if you are concerned with how to talk to someone you've never met before, go to Valerie. She's hey, right. a great conversation that you can have. But I would also I would definitely tell them, well, for one, I would tell them to, you know, not be afraid to have a conversation with somebody that they've never met because you'll never know if you and that person have anything in common. Mm -hmm. So like if I said, no, I don't want to do this podcast, then I would have never known that I have a cousin who lives, you know, on this side of the country that (laughs) is very similar, that's similar in ways that I just never knew Mm. like I've been saying this whole year this past year I was like I need somebody to teach me football if we had this conversation sooner Kai could have been teaching me football this whole time (laughs) or if like say Kai is like you know he's he needs a cousin who's help who's good in math or who can go play sports with him that would have been me because I have been a tom girl all my life I play sports I definitely have been playing sports since well not all my life because my mother said I used to run very scarily. And so she didn't want to put me in sports. But since about middle school, I've been playing sports. And so, you know, there's always like things that you can connect with people about that you would never know until you finally just build up enough courage to say hi. <laughs> build up the courage to say hi. That's a nice little tagline. Love <laughs> that. <laughs> Kai, what about you? What would you, besides telling them to come talk to me, <laughs> what other <laughs> idea well, would you have for them to do actually i would like to pick up on what she said um actually i am actually struggling in a little math class right now um i got like, <laughs> trigonometry um it's actually oh i'm good in that <laughs> <laughs> if you said that i want to actually say okay give me a second but trigonometry i'm definitely yeah i'm here for that <laughs> um, but actually like um honestly i could say like for me I'm very antisocial in a way. So like, I don't really have a lot of friends. I don't really, you know, get up, go out my way to actually try to find friends. I apologize for that. But um, like <laughs> my first time going to college, um, I wasn't really looking for any new friends because like just that previous year, I just came down to Alabama and I had to, you know, try to find, you know, mm-hmm. some friends. so I really wasn't looking for no new friends when I went down to, um, to college um actually somebody approached me and you know they actually was like oh yeah let's hang and then from there it was like from that one person it was like, oh yeah I also got these group of friends too so I started hanging out with them so I can say like I'm not very antisocial to begin with so you know just to get out my comfort zone and actually try to be social and actually try to interact with people um mm. I guess that's you know I think that's a plus for me just interacting with anyone if that even means family or friends mm-hmm. I'm not I can say that I'm not really that type of person. I'm an introvert. What is it? Introvert? Introvert. Yeah. You're an introvert, but the term that I use for it, because I'm not antisocial, because as you can see, I'm, I can hold a conversation. I just don't always like to start conversations. Mm-hmm. I don't call it antisocial. I call it selectively social. Because, oh. yeah, because I any of my closest friends, my sister, everybody can tell you my, like, one of the main things I always say is, like, I don't always like being around people I don't like people I don't like people being in my personal square all that stuff however if you come into my personal square I'm not gonna just you know just sit there awkwardly I can hold the conversation I just if Mm. I if I'm given the opportunity not to 
<laughs> so it's not antisocial, it's just selectively social. You just have moments when you want to be by yourself. You don't want to talk. You, you're in a room full of people and you just don't feel like talking. That's selective socialism. That's not antisocialism. <laughs> but it's just, also being introverted. You know, you sometimes just want to say to yourself, just introverted. It's fine. See, like that, I guess I can use that, though. I guess I am very selective. Selective social. And you'll learn the rest of us, the rest of the series, we're all the same. We're all the same. <laughs> all the same. We, literally, anytime we're having, like, one of the family chats and everything, we type in a chat, like, okay, who's going on? Because I don't want to be the only one on. Like, we have, we're, we're all the same. Like, you'll blend it right in with us. <laughs> Y'all type that behind my back? It's fine. You know, well, it's fine. We we like seeing you guys. It's just we don't want to be the only 3G on the call. <laughs> no, no, you don't. That's like true. Least that at least a couple of us are on. Because you never oh. know what you're gonna learn on the call too. All right. Well, Alicia, you're gonna have to invite Kai here, you know, because I I've I've done what I could. <laughs> yes, Kai, you have to come on. You have to come on. You have to do your 10 things to know about. We're fun people. Our chat, we're fun people. You can do your 10 things. We all respond as if it's like we're watching a YouTube video or a TikTok video. So it feels weird to do it. I know. Like the only way they got me to do mine was I had to act like I was recording a YouTube video. Right. Because to ask me to just say like, oh, 10 fun facts about yourself. It's like, what do I know about myself? And then (laughs) who wants to know these things? So you think of it as a YouTube video. We're fun people. Like you should really come on the call sometimes. It's really fun. That was my invitation. I hope you said it. Because we're going to you come on a call. So I, at this point, I feel like I, I feel like I should say you're welcome because <laughs> you have a, both had an opportunity to expand yourself, to be courageous. One, because Kai, you're not that social. Like you said, you're so, and both of you are selectively social, which is the new thing apparently. And you have said, you've chosen to, to say yes to this and to meet somebody else in the family, especially a family that you don't necessarily know all that well or haven't been connected to at this level uh, for a while. So, so grateful. And then you guys shared quite a lot about yourselves in this time that we spent together. I, I've definitely learned some things. So that's fantastic. Um, I wanted to make sure, I don't know, Kai, if, if she's comfortable, but I know you have a guest over there. You have a, a special okay. friend who's been observing i'd like her she left already my bad and he left what yeah uh, yes. uh, better go handle some business so all I, right his know. girlfriend katie was hanging out there i was like i didn't want to ignore her give her a little air time but all right <laughs> katie in absentia, in absentia. <laughs> any final words for each other or for whoever's watching um i'm here when it comes to math <laughs> If you need someone to talk to about why you're buying another pair of sneakers in the best way possible. I am the best person to talk to because I'm not going to talk you out of buying another pair of sneakers. I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so when it comes to sneakers, math, I'm here. But also if, you know, you have a funny joke you want to tell, you want to tell us about a movie, literally you should be in our chat because that's all we do in our chat. We just, we're not like, we're not going to text each other every day because we're young people. We don't actually want to be texted every day. We don't want it. So <laughs> when it's, you know. That's like a low, low key shade, I think. It's not. <laughs> For no. us. Kai, I'm telling you, you have to see these family chats. Like I said on the, I said on the Zoom calls all the time, like, please don't go ringing down anyone's phone. Cause I promise you, we're not going to answer. Like I'm that cousin. I make sure that the, that the two G's and the OG's, we make sure that they know, like, you know, we're here, but don't like you know we, we we do pretty good we don't we don't get on no, y'all don't much. yeah they yeah. don't we leave out let you do your thing they almost <laughs> did though i'm telling you they almost did i think actually i think they were gonna call you i saved you from that i just want you to know that <laughs> yeah. i saved you from that i know i probably like, i probably called him alicia i called him but i call kai on a regular basis you know yeah. just checking well, in and know. stuff so <laughs> I did I did save you from that because the, the aunt, the OG aunts were like, oh, what's his number? Let's all call him. I said, guys, please don't. <laughs> I said, this is a generation that does block. We don't care if your family we will block. So you're welcome. Is that why I would definitely join our call? Oh my <laughs> no, 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 that's not the reason why. I, I promise you. I never, I never <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. I'm, you know what? I'm oh, cool okay. because you, you always call oh. me back, so I'm okay with that. Oh, basically, because, like, okay, so, you know, like, you got an Apple product and sometimes like I have my phone. I have what well, I literally permanently have my phone on do not disturb. So okay. like if you're not we on my phone's there. list and I'm not saying that you're not like, you know, like I don't just, I just don't think about it. Like, you know, it's just some people that just don't call like often. So I just don't mm -hmm. really think about it at the moment. You know, like, oh yeah, I need to go ahead and put it on there sometimes. Like I don't, and you know, it's nothing against like, oh, I'm personal. tired of it. No, it's, it's nothing not. personal. We literally, everyone, all of our phones live on do not disturb. I'm sorry. That's just really? what it is. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like when I get to it, like, but it's not like, it'll yeah. be like 30 minutes after. It'll be like, you know, every time I call, it'll be like 15 minutes. Or as, you call, as you Siri respond. Likes to put in yeah. is now instead of just do not disturb, they gave us nicer terms. It's work focus or focus time or sleep right. time, but they all mean do not disturb. And our phones are always on one of those settings. Wow. It's, just, it's just how we are, you okay. know? Nothing against you guys. Oh, that's helpful. That's helpful. I only do that when I'm asleep, but okay. <laughs> and you know, when you become a business person, you'll just know that there's certain phones that you just do not put on do not disturb because they you need to be disturbed yeah. for your business. Right. <laughs> well, not disturbed, but you definitely need to be yeah. alerted. Oh man, y'all have been so fun. This has been really interesting. Thank you both so much for sharing yourselves, for connecting with each other. I would like to see you all continue to stay involved or in touch in some way, shape or form, but that's just like, you know, the Tia Valerie in me coming out, not like the host, because <laughs> my, my host self would be like, hey, if you all continue to stay in touch, great, good for you. And if not, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be, but. <laughs> <you know. laughs> no, nah, you know, like my, my mom, you know, she lives in Washington, DC, so. You know, that's not that far away. So maybe I will come up there one day. You know? Me and my sister are planning a trip there because Washington, D.C. has all the museums. We are planning a museum tour. So we will come by and we will just stop by say, hey, <laughs> we'll be there. Uh, this is fantastic. All right. Well, you guys don't go anywhere. But for the rest of us who've been to the rest of you who've been tuning in, Thank you all so much for joining us for this episode of Not Quite Strangers. As you can see with even family, there's an opportunity for people to connect, to know one another even better, opportunity to drill down and see where are the common threads or where can you learn and grow from each other. So I'm so excited. Alicia, thank you. Kai, thank you. You guys are awesome. And I look forward to seeing and hearing how this relationship continues to grow and evolve and get you all tied into the rest of the family events. Uh, for the others listening here, go out and meet your own family. Go say hi to that uncle or that cousin or that grandparent that you haven't re you know, reached out to in a while. See what they're up to and what they can offer and what they might need you know, for you to contribute to them. So grateful for all of your attention. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everyone. You've been listening to the podcast, Not Quite Strangers. Be sure to subscribe or follow on your favorite video or podcast platform. And for more information and content, go to notquitestrangers.com. See you next time.